Hello everybody, my name is Simon Aber. I'm the campus pastor for the Homa campus. And first of all, I'd like to invite you, if you don't have a church that you're part of, hey, we want to invite you to come every weekend, Sunday in Homa, Louisiana at H.L. Bourgeois Auditorium at 10 a.m. And uh, you know, if you're looking for a church family, place to get connected, hey, just come and join us. Today we start week three, which last week we talked about the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the fact that it leads to shame and victimization. This week, we're gonna talk about the tree of life. I wanna begin by reading Galatians chapter five and verse 13, it says, for we have, or you have been called to live in freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. We wanna look at this part here where it says that we have been called. You know, many people feel that there's a calling, looking for the call on their lives. Well, the first thing that we're actually called as believers is we're called to live in freedom. And so when we look at the tree of life, the tree of life, it helps us to be set free from incorrect thinkings about who God is and about who we are. And our prayer is that through the process of this whole teaching that we will begin to understand what it means to live in the tree of life and use this as the framework for, for a way to help us to approach every circ circumstance and situation in our lives. So I wanna start by looking at the fruit of living in the tree of life. The first one is the tree of life results in fellowship with God. In John chapter 17, verse three, it says, now this is eternal life, that we know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Now the word new here in the Greek comes from the word genosko, which means to recognize and to understand or to understand completely. What this indicates is relationship. Relationship is recognizing and understanding someone that you're in relationship with. And what we're talking about here, living and eating from the tree of life, is about recognizing and understanding His love for us. Now we know that God has asked us to love us, or to love Him, but not before He lavished His love on us by sending His Son to the cross and sacrificing His life. So I wanna read you this passage of scripture in 1 John, Chapter four, beginning in verse nine, it says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. And I love this part, it says, this is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son for us. Every time I read this, I think of the John 3, 16, and I think of the same thing, that before God did anything, he loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave. And so what we see here at the cross, the cross just doesn't represent some sacrificial death. What it talks about is a promise and an oath that God is making to us. It's a blood covenant that God made with his son so that we can have confidence that he would never ever change his mind. In Hebrews chapter six, verse 17 and 18, it says, God also bound himself with an oath so that those who receive the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never ever change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath. And these two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence that we ho and hold this hope that lies before us. Now, in the Old Testament, God, God made covenants with man and man would always break these covenants. But this time, God decides to seal it with the blood of his son, and he makes this covenant with Jesus so that now we will never, ever have to be separated from his love. The second thing is fellowship with God results in innocence, not the other way around. Fellowship with God produces innocence. In Genesis 3, 7, it says that Adam and Eve recognized that there were sin that they were naked. Now, think about this for a moment. They recognized that they were naked, but before they had sinned, they didn't have any clue that they were naked. They weren't ashamed. 
All they did was spend time in fellowship with God. And I'm telling you, as we spend time with God in listening to his voice, talking to him, obeying him, worshiping him, enjoying our time with him, we will notice that there will be a transformation that will take place in our lives not just on the outside, but on the inside. And literally, we will become as though we're naked and transparent and unashamed before Him. Nakedness in, in Genesis 3 here just speaks about innocence. Adam and Eve were unaware of any reason to hide anything from God. They were not sin conscious. Could you imagine that for a moment? Can you imagine living your life in living this incredible life that God has called us to, innocent, not ashamed. You know, this reminds me, and I don't know, my wife and I have four kids, and uh, you know, we empty nesters now, but our four kids, uh, you know, as they were growing up, it's it was inevitable that one of them, uh, while we were bathing them, you wiping them down, you turn your, you turn your head for a second, and boom, they run off naked, completely no clothes. This has actually happened before in the midst of having company. Kids run, it was probably my son more than likely, ran through the whole living room hollering and just you know having such a good time, completely, absolutely innocent with no shame. Childlike innocence is an amazing, amazing virtue. And Adam and Eve here, in their nakedness was part of the innocent. Their nakedness was part of the innocence and the simplicity of their lives. Before they sinned, they had nothing to be ashamed of. Simple innocence is born out of friendship with God. The third thing here is innocence is the conduit of God's power. In Luke chapter four, we find Jesus says this. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and to recover sight to the blind and set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news. What does that mean to be anointed to do something? What it means is that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit it means that the anointing that we have that is being produced inside of us, the power is His, it's not our own. And I'm telling you, God will flow through us in innocence when we recognize our need for Him. The fourth thing is, is that innocence results in freedom, and this is the big one. I love this passage of scripture in Galatians chapter five and one. It says, for it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. In other words, he goes to the cross to set us free so that we can live in freedom. Freedom from offense, freedom from rejection, freedom from insecurities. I really believe this and I believe this for such a long time. I believe that as a believer, as we progress in our relationship with God and we begin to understand who God is and we understand who we are, that we will get to the place that we will never ever be offended because we understand we're so secure. We don't feel rejected. We feel like we're a part, that we're sons and daughters of the Most High God. And I'm telling you, as, as we begin to progress and we begin to eat of this tree of life, I'm telling you that we begin to see things so much differently than we did before. When we attend church in the tree of life, man, we look at church differently. As a matter of fact, we love everything about it. We even love the pastor. We love the people. We love the worship no matter how loud it is. We just love being a part of it because our focus is on the reason that we're there in the first place. Innocence sets us free. No longer, no longer do we even hold people to impossible standards. We are quick to forgive and slow to be offended. Now let's look at some applications here. How do we live in this tree of life? Let me give you four things really quick. We must remember that relationship with the Father is essential to living in the tree of life. 
In order to enjoy this right relationship with God, we must receive his extravagant love. We must recognize that this love that he has for us goes beyond anything we can imagine. In Romans chapter five, verse eight, God, it says this, Paul, Paul writes this, he says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While I was rejecting him, while I was avoiding him, while I was cursing him, he died for us. He made the first move. Secondly, we must remember because of the finished work of the cross, that we are declared righteous before God. Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified, just as if we had never sinned, through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's amazing. So many people are serving God, and they're serving God through duty and fear, just like a, a servant would. But man, we've got to come to the place to where we recognize that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Ask yourself this question. Do I live my life as a son or do I live my life as a servant? The third thing is we must recognize the two environments that we live in. There are two things here. There are two trees in the garden. Again, it's the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life or relationship says do it and live. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil or religion says do it or suffer. The fourth thing is, is we must ask for help. We must ask God to help us to make life-giving decisions every day. And I'm telling you, if we do this, we will begin to experience the tree of life living. Before we turn it over to our big groups, I just wanna pray. Father, we just thank you. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you Lord, for what you've given us. Lord, we thank you that you have made a way. You went to the cross, made a way so that we can be free, so that we can encounter a deeper relationship with you. Father, we ask, Lord, that through the process of this whole series, Father, that we will be renewed, Lord, that our mind will be renewed by the washing of the water of your word, Lord, so that we can begin to understand who you are and that we can see who we are in you. And Father, we ask you to do this today, and we honor you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And now we want to turn it over to your B-group leader.